There are some exciting new features for Season 2 of Diablo 2 Resurrected, and that is the Terror Zones and the Sunder Charms. But before you can get out there and farm these Terror Zones and hopefully get yourself a Sunder Charm, you're going to need to build up a little bit of value in order to trade, or you need to actually find some of the best gear in the game so you can get very, very powerful and really slap away the monsters in these Terror Zones. Now, right here today, I'm giving you a build. I'm giving you the actual exact run in the strategy in order to build wealth as consistently as possible right at the beginning of a ladder reset. Now, first off, I'll show you the build that I love to use here. Now that they've kind of changed it for 2.4, because the actual lightning skills are very beneficial for doing the run specifically that I'm going to show you. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you exactly what lightning skill I'm using and it's not actually lightning, it is actually going Nova. That's because Nova only has one synergy along with of course lightning mastery and you can actually get plenty of damage out of this particular build here to really slaughter down everything that you're looking for. So maxing out Nova, we're maxing out the synergy of static and as soon as you can max out the lightning mastery, there's obviously gonna be one point wonders that you need as well, such as over here on warmth, and we go ahead and put one into frozen armor. Now, once you can get up to it and you can put the points into it, you can actually get a ton of safety here with the remaining points from the different skill quests and from getting higher level. Max uh, energy shield can save your life so much. And actually, this is not a max Vita build either. So we got uh, right here 20 points into energy shield and we have 15 points into telekinesis up here. Um, you could shift it around to min and max a little bit, but that actually provides so much safety because you actually want to try to get as much mana as possible. You look at how the number over here is way higher than over there. Now, looking at the stats, you see we actually didn't go max Vita. We went max energy because we're doing an energy shield nova build just enough strength to wear your gear on the gear i have some a little bit better stuff on this particular character but i'm going to give you some of the budget options to throw on a spirit right here spirit sword spirit shield up here you could throw on a lore a three socketed with uh, topazes in it up here on the helm things like that i don't even have an amulet on right here but any fcr amulet any lightning skills you can get right here uh, skin of the Viper Magi, semi-easy to get, but early on a ladder could be tough. Stealth on here for that faster cast rate is going to be mega important. Any FCR rings here to reach any breakpoint that you can get to that is going to be good. Over here, um, boots, these are tri-res, but actually with energy shield, the lightning and fire and cold is not important really. The poison res is actually kind of pretty important on an energy shield build. Over here, I have frost burns, but... If you can get Mage Fist, Trang's Gloves, or whatever rare gloves, like I said, can get you the Poison Res on there like that. On the belt, I got Gold Wrap from Magic Fine, but a, a very good budget option. Make yourself any caster belt to try to get you to that next breakpoint. Really, FCR breakpoints early on, faster teleporting, faster casting, is going to be mega important until you can get that Arachnid's Mesh. So that's the character. Now let's see where you really need to run in order to get this wealth as consistently as possible. Now here we are out at the Black Marsh Waypoint. Now teleport around until you find the Forgotten Tower. And if you haven't guessed yet, we're going to be running the Countess. Once you find the Forgotten Tower, you got to head all the way down to the bottom. But wait, don't just zip right down there and not do anything because this is part of the strategy right here. Make sure on the way down there, you're slapping whatever champions and ghost packs you can along the way. So here's a champion pack. Make sure you take it out. Every monster you kill is a chance to find something good. Even this champion right here, you could find yourself a Shaco along the way. You could find yourself an Oculus. You could even find yourself four socketed monarchs that are worth something early on. And these monsters are incredibly weak. Taking a glance up at the mini map, remember, always turn left when you're going down into the Forgotten Tower because that's always going to be the way, well, nine out of ten times anyways, down to the next level. Some of them are super quick like that one. And then once you dip down, make sure you slap any of the ghost packs along the way. This one was a champion one, but literally any of the ghost packs on the way down there. Because of their smaller loot drop table that they have, they have a higher chance of dropping runes. And that means if you have a better chance of dropping a rune, there's a better chance of it being a high rune. Along with that, you have really good odds of getting things like jewels and charms from them ghosts as well. So the packs down here aren't usually super large and there isn't huge density, but just go ahead and slap them down as you see them. And then once you're down to the bottom, make sure you hop over here. And of course you're taking out the Countess once you're down here. If you didn't know, you see all these runes the Countess dropped. That's because she has a special rune drop table. If you actually run these on higher difficulty, she has a better chance of dropping more items, which those more items can actually override her special rune drop table, meaning you'll actually get less runes. So this is actually a good thing to run on players one difficulty. 
So you notice here we got a tile rune, that's good for making spirit sets, but you can get all sorts of different kinds of runes, and that's part of this strategy. Make sure you save up spirit rune sets and insight rune sets very early on because everyone needs to make that insight and everyone's going to be re-rolling and re-rolling and re-rolling that spirit trying to get 35 fcr so they're going to need a ton of these spirit rune sets on top of that from her special rune drop table you can actually get up to an ist rune so finding one of those is going to be absolutely amazing and then of course from the countess she is one of three monsters here in diablo 2 resurrected that can drop keys that you need in order to farm torches that every single character is going to need also second part of this strategy is heading out to the arcane sanctuary and farming ghost packs on your way out to take out the summoner now these ghost packs are pretty prevalent out here and the same rule applies as in the forgotten tower when you take them out they have that higher rune drop chance which means you have a better chance of getting high runes now, I will mention, make sure you don't kill them over the open area because they will drop absolutely nothing. But you see here, they definitely have higher chances of dropping those high runes. There is actually quite a bit of density out here too, so if you're strong enough and if you want to, you can take out other champions along the way as well. If you're a sorceress, go ahead and teleport out and see if he's there. And then go ahead like and continue clearing these ghost packs on your way back. And then go up the other arms, try to find the summoner there. Also important to note, when you do come out to these other ends of the spindles, there are actually uh, super chests out here that drop a ton of items. And I've even heard stories of people getting high runes out of those as well. So don't forget to hit those real quick when you're out here. Once you eventually do find the right way, just head out here, take out the summoner, and hope that you find a key from him. He is actually the second one here of three monsters that can drop keys you need in order to farm those torches. Next up, I kind of throw it in as optional because it's just so incredibly easy. It's hard not to justify coming out here and just slapping down Eldritch picking up and seeing what you can get because there is relatively good density and it's incredibly easy to get to and then of course shank right down here as well similar situation so incredibly easy to get to and some pretty good darn dense density watch out for these quill rats so they can get you every once in a while and we'll throw another optional one on here quite often pindle is not going to be immune to lightning though so you can come out here and slap down him and his minions once again super easy to find and pretty easy to take him out and if you're feeling real bold and you want to add another one, I would say it's optional on the end. I usually don't do this day one of ladder because it's so dangerous and so difficult and it's taking a bunch of time. But you can go farm the third and final key here from down in the Halls of Pain. And that's taking out Neolithak. So Neolithak is incredibly dangerous. So you almost want to prepare to die, especially if you do not have a nature's piece. And he is quite frequently immune to lightning. So it's not really the best for this particular build. Probably one out of four times it appears to me anyways that he is immune to lightning so that's why i said this is another one of those optional ones and it's so incredibly dangerous down here but he can drop every single item in the game and that's where you get the third and final key so one other bonus one here that i run it's not the most efficient but i do just because it's fun and easy it's just a little bit off the beaten path and that is heading out Arius Plateau and taking out the rest shocket. All you got to do is head up to the left or to the right. If you're under the wall, you went the wrong way. So head the other way and boom, sometimes thrust shocket's right there. He's just so incredibly weak and easy. And he can drop a ton of items, almost every item that Pindle can. So he's super easy. So sometimes I throw him in there just for fun. So important to note some of the downsides. This is not going to do great in the Chaos Sanctuary unless you have absolutely GG gear. In Cows, players one, maybe three, it's going to be okay. But in full Cow games, it's going to be a slow go, especially with that super budget gear. And it's not particularly great at one very large target. You're not going to be farming and taking out the Ubers. You're not going to be taking out D-Clone with this build. Even Andariel and Mephisto sometimes can be a wee bit of a struggle. It's just not made for taking out one individual large monster. It's made for taking out those large but very weak packs very quickly. Let me know your favorite ladder reset strategy down in the comment section. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe up before you go. Check out this video right up over here as well. I know you're going to like it. Peace out, fellas. And don't forget, keep slaying.